Good morning. 19 minutes after 7 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. It is January 15th, 2016. Hmm, looks like it's going to be some weather out there tonight. I don't think it's raining right now, is it? Was it raining on your way in, Robin? Yeah. It oh, it was raining. Way in. Oh, wow. It's sprinkling out there. All right, right let's now. see. All right, let's see what we got. Go first of all. Good morning, Robin. How are you doing? Good, good, good. How are you doing, let's Larry? Look good. Let's look at the weather. Good. Sixty-three degrees. So uh-huh. that's why it doesn't feel so cold out there. <laughs> uh, the forecast is calling for rain. There's a one hundred percent chance we'll see thunderstorms today. High temperatures in the lower seventies. Winds. Uh, I can see from the tops of the palm trees outside the uh, studios here at the Paddock Mall. The tops of the trees are blowing. Yeah, it's windy. It says here they're coming from the south, southeast, and then shifting to the west, southwest. Oh, my gosh. At 10 to 20 miles per hour. High temperatures today, did I say 72? Lows tonight, 54, so not that cold tonight. Tomorrow, only a 10% chance of rain, and temperatures remaining about the same. And then Sunday, they drop a bit. There's a chance of rain Sunday. I guess there's a, a lull between two periods of rain. And it's uh-huh. after the second period of rain that more cold temperatures move in. Oh, so so okay. actually, it's actually between today and Sunday, tomorrow, in other words, it should be a nice day. Oh, nice. It should be a nice day. So if you've got something planned for either Saturday or Sunday and it, it's outdoors, you might want to do it on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Uh, so there you go. And, and there Your was pocket just made it. I know. I, I heard that. I'm, I'm not used to my new phone. <laughs> all right. And, th- and then there was a report on, uh, I, I know this is all weather related, but you know, sometimes weather is the most interesting news to me. It is. It's uh, super the weekend, there's a weekend system that may bring snow to the south. Now, that doesn't mean us, um, but when you look at the whole country, um, we could see some snow dipping as low as... Dallas? Is that possible? Oklahoma City? Wichita Falls? Isn't that something? It almost seems impossible. Well, no, I don't Gosh. know. I've never lived there, so I don't know. Uh-huh. And then here in Florida, New Orleans, uh, and Atlanta, it looks like lots of lots of rain. Just mm-hmm. just kind of a rainy day today. So. Oh, gosh. Rainy days and Fridays. They don't cut me down. <laughs> no, me neither. No, <laughs> I love every day. I'm fine I appreciate with it. it, and thank God. Between 7.35 and 8, we will um, talk about the things in the news. I, I try to... Uh, Say fun things for Friday, and and I have. This is a fun thing. What what did I say for this morning? Oh, just some dish some news. <laughs> oh my gosh, where is it? Oh oh, the good old days. That's right. That's right. It's I, I've got this article that I was looking at, pointing out that these are not necessarily the, the good old days. I mean, <laughs> no, these are the. Hold on, let me say it again. The good old days were not necessarily that good. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Okay. Why? What the opinion is? Okay. But anyway, so but but there was a debate last night, so I'll make sure we get some of the news in there and commentary, just as always, and just try to keep it light. There was, and I, I would never keep it light if there was something horrible that happened. Just so you know. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Um. And then at eight thirty-five, that's when we read the news. We refrain from offering our opinion. Yep. Nine oh five. Jim George comes in. Jim is the owner of American Cable Services and Media in Motion, and he helps us understand technology a little bit better. Yes, he does. What to do with it and how to use it and when to use it and why to use it. and uh, yeah, yeah, Your phone becomes so many different things, including uh, whatever that beep just was. That's probably Dan. Probably telling you that you think? someone won't be coming in today. Yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yes, I do. No, somebody commented on a post. As well, oh, so okay. I guess. Okay. I don't know. I, you know, I'm so. <laughs> That's my. It's prediction. still new to me. <laughs> hey, look who's coming back. Bob Kennedy. He was with us for a while back. I don't know how long ago it's been, but he's with Berkshire Hathaway Home Team Realty, and he was back then. He still is now. We're going to learn about buying and selling homes. It was always a fun visit for me. First of all, he's just a fun gentleman. Uh-huh. I was going to say fun guy, but that means more than one fungus. Yes. But he talks about buying and selling homes. You know, I yes. I think I would like to do this. <laughs> buy and sell a home. No, no, just buy one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to sell one. I just want to buy one. I just want to get into an actual house. You could be one of those I'm tired flippers. of living in a foot. What do I live in? A, a, a shoebox. I live in a shoebox, mm-hmm. which is a nice shoebox. Hey, I, you know, you don't complain. No. You know, when you go to bed and it's warm and you have a place to sleep and to eat and to and to do your things, and you realize that's really a blessing, you don't complain. That's right. And the rain doesn't come in and Still, I would like to good. get a house. Uh, Ocala Magazine Radio today. Kelly Hart is uh, the host of that program. We love Kelly. She comes in here and brightens our studio with mm-hmm. her uh, personality, her charm. Yep. Yep, and she's of course, charming. she's the editor, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Mm-hmm. Todd Frobish at ten thirty-five.
live. Todd is the owner of Brick City Bicycles. He may be here with two other gentlemen, Steve and Michael Mace, father and son. They've been in before with Todd. Yes. Uh, they're all from Brick City Bicycles. And, you know, with the cold weather, I'm going to tell you, my car almost didn't start yesterday. This morning was a lot better. Yeah, mine too. Mine was uh, really but that cold, I got to do something about my battery. But just think, if I didn't start mm-hmm. it, I would have had to walk in here. I'm not paying $20 to a cab. No, or you it's could have called me. That's true. If it was raining, I would have called you. But I was think I was ready to walk. Uh-huh. I had my little app on my new phone mm-hmm. that would have told me how far I was walking. Yeah. You <laughs> called the cab for me one day, though. I did. Well, you 15 miles away. <laughs> I'm only four miles away. It's a big difference. <laughs> Anyway, so we'll be talking about bicycles at 1035. Legal Lane at 1105. This is the program that started last week, and uh, it is hosted by Vanessa Lane Jennings. She's a wonderful attorney, wonderful personality. We got to meet her last week. And a beautiful lady. She'll be in here again today to answer our legal questions. Yeah, she's wonderful. Fun with Joe. (laughs) Fun with Joe. Where's my thing about hats? Oh, today is National Hat Day. Oh, okay. It's also National Strawberry Ice Cream Day, by the way. Oh, nice. Uh, But National Hat Day is why I chose uh, a quiz for you and Joe about people's hats. Uh Uh-huh. I will describe the person, tell you what kind of hat they wore, and you tell me who I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. So it's it's probably easier than I think. Uh, Nice. And then with with Galen, you know, there there, there was a subject I wanted to uh, bring up with Galen. Did I forget to print it? I remember what it was. I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to go back in the other room and print it up. I don't see it here. But but what I uh, had in mind for again, there was an article on specializing in a sport. This is for for children, you know, okay. ch- children specializing in a sport. Okay. And and I, I re- immediately could relate to this because of specializing in music. Yes. Um. W- well, you know what? We'll get to it when we get there. We'll talk. Okay. To you, I'll talk to you about it when we get there. Okay. Excellent. It's it's the debate as to whether you should encourage a child to specialize or not specialize in mm-hmm. one particular sport. Uh huh. See, and I have my opinions on this regarding music, mm-hmm. and I would love to hear Galen's opinion on this regarding sports. And I'll tell you what the guy who wrote the article says. Okay. Okay. His thoughts. Uh, oh, 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 I want to I play something for you. Okay. And see if you can tell me what this is. Okay. Are you, are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. What do you think this is the sound of? Ready? What do you, what do you think? Hold on. Hold on. i got to get rid of something else. Otherwise, I'll be going nuts here. Hold on. What, what do you think this is the sound of? What does that sound like to you? Uh, it sounded like that one uh, uh, dinosaur from Jurassic Park. <laughs> it did. It did. Mm-hmm. All right, let me, let me play it again for you. Ready? I'm going to play a little bit more of it, though. Let's see if you can get okay. it when I, when I give you more. Tornado? What does that sound like? Are those birds all coming <laughs> together? Isn't that something? What are you? It's animals? Is it it's animals? Horrible! Is it animals? It's horrible! No, no, no! Do you know what it is? I do. I'm gonna. Sh- I'm gonna share this okay. with you. This is a great story. Uh, th- there's a, a factory or a warehouse or something up in Boston, and there was a man, and uh, he was one of the workers. What is he described as? What is what is his title? <clears throat> He's an uploader. Oh, no, no. He, he uploaded the video. I'm sorry. So that's not his oh, name. okay. I guess he drives a forklift. Okay, it looks like he drives a forklift. Okay. It doesn't say what he does. But anyway, so he, he's, in the, he's in the warehouse, and he hears this, and he's like, oh, he's getting Holy like cow. chills up his spine. What the hell? It sounds like lots of people screaming. It sounds like animals, like you say. It's, yeah. But there was no... There's nothing going on. It was just a normal warehouse. The the music in the overhead uh, mm-hmm. intercom thing was happening. Was it the wind coming through the Let me slats? tell you what it was. I'll, I will reveal what it was. Okay. And if you've ever been there in this kind of situation, you'll know. They manufacture things that are made out of steel. And for, I don't exactly know why they do this, because it's steel items. But they pack them in uh, dry ice. Oh. They pack these steel things in dry ice. There's, mm-hmm. there's probably a reason that I don't understand. And then they wrap the the whole thing with cardboard. Uh-huh. Okay. 
and something and, and normally i guess they don't make noise because they do it in a certain way well the machine that wraps them with cardboard was wrapping them too tight or something <laughs> happened <laughs> and so when the dry ice hit the the uh, steel it didn't make that noise it made this noise <laughs> That's the noise it made. Oh my god! Isn't, isn't that crazy? That and so is he crazy. he finally figured it out. So he put a video up on on YouTube and and uh-huh. told his story. And uh, we've got to go. Cool. We'll be right back. I'm Carmen Roberts. And let me tell you, ISIS and terrorists do not get their guns from a gun show. Senator Marco Rubio bashing President Obama during the Republican presidential debate last night, saying his first response to any act of violence is gun control. We are in a war against ISIS. They are trying to attack us here in America. They attacked us in Philadelphia last week. They attacked us in San Bernardino two weeks ago. And the last line standing between them and our families might be us and a gun. When I'm president of the United States, we are defending the Second Amendment. And in the earlier undercard debate, Carly Fiorina went after the leading candidates of both parties. Hillary Clinton sits inside government and rakes in millions, handing out access and favors. And Donald Trump sits outside government and rakes in billions, buying people like Hillary Clinton. The debate aired on the Fox Business Network. Fox News, we report, you decide. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of finding someone to invest in his vision? One in 4.5 million. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? one in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. I encourage you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Put your money to work. Florida Credit Union has a money market special, 1% APY, until December 31st, 2016. That's right, through December 31st, 2016. $50,000 minimum balance to open and earn dividends. On January 1st, 2017, the account reverts back to a normal account at current rates. Federally insured by the NCUA, Florida Credit Union, enriching people every day. Visit one of Florida Credit Union's convenient locations today or their website, www.flcu.org. Offer ends February 28th, 2016. Have you ever seen a jet ski act or a dinosaur under a circus tent? Well, Cirque Italia, the water circus, is coming back from Italy with a brand new production featuring performers from around the world. Cirque Italia will be at the main Livestock Pavilion in Ocala January 21st through 24th. They have created a brand new show with Contortion, a Mermaid, and more. Plus, they're offering a special discount for our listeners. At the circus, you can get one free child's ticket with the purchase of an adult ticket if you say circus. So bring the family. Visit CirqueItalia.com for tickets and more information. Enrich your life at Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. Here, century-old oak trees surround stunning homes, the finest resort-style amenities, and a stately clubhouse. Our exceptional golf course will host the 2016 Coates Golf Championship presented by r l Carriers. And here you can savor a luxurious lifestyle that's second to none. Call 352-369-6969 for more information on our available real estate options and to schedule a home tour. 
The play How I Learned to Drive is live on stage at the Ocala Civic Theater January 14th through the 24th. Lil Bit is an outsider and she feels an odd kinship with Uncle Peck, a charming southern gentleman, until he turns predatory and molests his young niece during so-called driving lessons in his Buick Riviera. This Pulitzer Prize winning drama is intense and at times shockingly funny. This play contains strong adult themes and language. Tickets are $25 for adults, $12 for students. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, uh, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. It is raining here at the Paddock Mall, and it uh, looks like we've got a chance of rain, a 100% chance of rain in, in our community, in our listening area. So just so you know, if it's not raining where you are, it probably will soon. My sister-in-law texted me just a, a bit ago, and she wanted me to ask you all if you happen to... Uh, she, they live in in the uh, in the shores, Silver Spring Shores. Uh huh. They had a, uh, a German Shepherd, four year old German Shepherd. The dog's name is Karma, mm -hmm. and it went missing. So if anybody happens to find a, f a German Shepherd that looks like about four years old, I don't know much else about the dog, other than it's been missing. I think about a week now. So. Yeah, I think she's um, a tan, a tan one, black and tan. No, oh, okay, I don't know, but but anyway, if you, uh, German According Shepherd. According to the picture, German yeah. Shepherd. Celine Dion's husband passed away. Yeah, that was, was a shock when I heard see, that news from you. Broke that her husband and former manager Rene Angelil, is that how you say his name? I think so. He died yesterday at the age of seventy three after a long battle with throat cancer. Uh lots of famous people immediately started uh, expressing their uh, condolences on social media. Uh songwriter Diane Warren, who wrote many of the songs that Celine Dion uh sang. <coughs> uh uh huh. Uh, posted, uh, text, or tweeted rather. Uh, Renee Angelil, rest in peace. Thank you for Celine for giving her my songs. Thank you for everything. I guess I guess he gave Celine the song, huh? Yeah. Well, he he was responsible for her career from the very beginning. He was the guy Doc that got her out there. Doctor Oz wrote, "I'm sorry for your loss. My thoughts and prayers." Um, so yeah, good. he's he's the one that made her in the public eye and made her famous. Looks like Jim George. Yeah, I didn't think about it until you said that. <laughs> uh, so, all right, there you go. So, rest in peace. And Celine, you've always, uh, she has those twins, right? Don't, don't so ask me. Are probably I don't, like I don't know. I don't know how you keep now. up with all that stuff. I, I honestly don't know. So. All right, let's see. What else? Um, mm, the uh, Tim Peake, the former, a former British Army major, will become the first astronaut to perform a spacewalk wearing the Union Jack when he oh. steps outside the International Space Station today to replace a failed voltage regulator. You might want to pick another day, Mr. Peake. It's raining. You might want to just <laughs> stay inside today. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't rain out there, does it? No. <laughs> Assisting uh, Tim Peake will be American major Tim Cobra who will be on his third spacewalk. The repair job take, uh, begins at 7.55 a.m., in about 12 minutes Gosh, or so. Gosh, cool. It's expected to take more than six hours. Peak is the first Brit to visit the space station. He has already had quite a trip. He ran a London marathon and created a buzz after dialing a wrong number from space. Oh, The, the London oh, marathon right. was virtual. He, well, not virtual. He was actually running up there Yeah. while other people in London were running. Right, and 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 you had that wrong number dialing in in the new, one of the news bites segments right, right, last right. week. Yeah, uh, the president will be interviewed live on YouTube today. Uh, the interview to be conducted by YouTube personalities Destin Sandlin, Ingrid Nilsson, and Adandi Thorne, also known as Swoozy. Oh. Why is he being interviewed? He already did a State of the Union the other day. <laughs> they will include questions <laughs> submitted on social media using the hashtag YouTube asks Obama. Okay. The White House no doubt is hoping for lots of eyeballs. Obama's mm -hmm. final State of the Union got the smallest audience since Nielsen started keeping track in 1993. Wow, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. 
No, I didn't know that either. You can watch the interview on YouTube at 2.15 p.m. on the White House's official YouTube channel. Gosh. There's a hurricane named after my son out there. How about that? Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. Hurricane Alex, the first hurricane to form in the Atlantic in January in nearly 80 years. It is forecast to bring heavy rains, heavy wind and rain to the uh, Azores today. Uh huh. Oh wow! It's a rare winter storm. It could spur the uh, some flash floods and mudslides in the Azores. Oh gosh! Uh, which is 850 miles west of Portugal. My my brother and his family lived in the Azores while he was stationed yep. there in the Air Force for that was pretty interesting. Quite a long time, right? Yep. Your mom told me about it when they went to visit. The Atlantic hurricane season typically runs from June through November. Hurricane Alex is only the third hurricane ever recorded in January in the Atlantic Ocean. There you go. Oh, cool. Uh, The armed group that took over a federal wildlife refuge in Oregon more than a week ago will host a community meeting at 7 p.m. Pacific time today Uh, to explain its position and to ask people people to please stop sending them sex toys. (laughs) They just want to be in the news. They're not accomplishing anything by being there. Um, It comes as resentment toward the group. Uh, as it grows, um, uh, I'm sorry, it comes as resentment toward the group grows among the residents of Burns, Oregon. Uh, they were getting support at first. Um, uh, this is my two cents. And uh, now they're not getting as much support as they once got. Yeah, because the two guys, the two men it affected, they've, you know, turned themselves in. They're doing what they're doing. And, you know, it's done now. The group arrived oh. January 2nd. They've been in that building ever since. Um, anyway. Silicon Valley investors may be bracing for a plunge in venture spending this year. I had to look up what VC stood for. I wasn't in on that jargon. No, huh? uh. Venture capital is what that means. Okay. About $58.5 billion was invested by venture capitalists in 2015, according to Price Waterhouse Coopers and National Venture Capital Association, in a report that was published this morning. The website and magazine The Money Tree shows that 2015 was the biggest year since 2000 when nearly $105 billion was invested, but there are signs the funding party may be waning. The fourth quarter numbers show the smallest amount of funding since the third quarter of 2014, so people with money are not doling it out with the hopes of making more money as as easily as those once as they once were. Yeah, they're waiting on the election. They're waiting and for. Pam Bondi here in Florida, um, Attorney General Pam Bondi, she wants you to know that if you have been a victim, you um, may have some money coming back to you. Pam Bondi has obtained a temporary injunction shutting down a loan scheme that charged consumers fees anywhere from $500 to $1,000 for loan referral services. <laughs> A loan referral services. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh can can my you tell gosh. me where I can go to get a loan? Yeah. Yeah, I that, can tell you. Give me a $500 or oh, I make it 1000 That is ridiculous. According to the complaint filed by the Attorney General's office, most of the consumers were strapped for cash, but they could have easily performed the services on their own for free. Oh, sure. You know where to go for the, a loan. The complaint alleges that violations of the Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act against these loan service companies and three individuals identified as, and this is where you have to pay attention if you've borrowed any money from any of these organizations, Liberty Unsecured Incorporated, Uh huh. Unsecured Loan Sources 2 Incorporated, First Solutions Incorporated, which also does business under the name of Credit One, so First Solutions Incorporated and or Credit One in that case, uh-huh. improvecredit.me, if you go to that website, if you had gone there, unsecured loan capital, and there were some three individuals also, you probably didn't do business with an individual, but the three people are Andrew Mangini, Michael Puglisi, and David Allen Stern. Wow. Consumers who did business with these Uh, Companies can submit a complaint to the Florida Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. In marketing and sales pitches, the defendants allegedly made false statements and deceptive representations to the consumers who needed a loan. 
According to the complaint, the defendants misled consumers to believe that the loans were guaranteed, that the upfront fees would, were processing fees, and that if the defendants did not obtain loans for the consumers, the defendants would refund any fees charged. Gosh. Apparently that didn't happen. And even when, it, even when the loan did go through, that money was still <laughs> deceptively gained. Yeah. The, com- wow. the complaint also asserts that the defendants used bank information, here's the scary part, provided by the consumers to withdraw funds from the consumers' bank accounts without the consumers' authorization. Just take money out of my bank. Thank you very yeah, much. exactly. Here's my routing number. Go for it. The Attorney General's office says it has more than 200 complaints. They're asking if you've been affected by any of those companies that I just named uh, to get a hold of them. Gosh. Um there, there is go. no free lunch. Or no free lunch. All right, we will take a little break and we'll come back with more of these kinds of things. This is the source, WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Friday, a rather cloudy, breezy, warm, or humid day. Periods of rain and a thunderstorm into the early afternoon hours, tapering to a shower late. Some of the thunderstorms may produce gusty winds, the high 72 to 76. Clearing Friday night, low 53 to 57. Saturday, sunshine, so clouds cooler and less humid, the high in the low 70s. Sunday, cloudy with a chance of rain and a thunderstorm in the morning, highs in the 60s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Ah, ouch. Does pain have you glued to the couch? Yes, unfortunately it's true that every year we must get older, but that doesn't mean we have to deal with pain in our back, knees, or shoulder. If your muscles and joints are sore, don't worry anymore. Come get acupuncture from me and you'll be pain-free. Acupuncture starts as low as $35 at a Better You Healthcare. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, at 615-5566. Stop your pain from driving you insane. Hold everything, Ocala. Here's the scoop on a three-day half-price tree sale right now at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens. Now listen, for three days only, now through Wednesday, every tree, large or small, is yours for half price off Bob Wines' already low prices. We're talking shade trees, dozens of different varieties, and all citrus trees, too. A gorgeous six-footer, regular $59.99, is just $30. Citrus trees, all kinds, regular $59.99, just $30. Larger sizes also available, also at half price. Hurry, this offer is three days only, so get on over to Bob Wines Camellia Gardens in Ocala and cash in on this huge deal. It's Bob Wines Camellia Gardens, Southeast 38th Street, Ocala. Daily till 4, we'll see you there today. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Cats are curious, and one of the biggest mysteries to a cat is a closed door. That's why they try to scoot inside with us or stick a paw under the door to get our attention. A lot of women like tattoos on their feet and ankles, which can easily be shown off by wearing sandals or going barefoot. But since there's so little fat in those areas, be prepared to really grit your teeth while you're getting inked. Did you know the latest research tells us rude behavior can become contagious? Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Located in Ocala, Rinstar Medical Research has offered a wide range of clinical research trials for 17 years. Rinstar conducts clinical trials for conditions such as migraines, memory decline, fibromyalgia, and sun-damaged skin. To learn more, call Rinstar at 352-629-5800. Help us create a healthier tomorrow by volunteering today. Please call Rinstar at 352-629-5800. All right, 12 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. Friday, that sounds, sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds yeah. Good. Just this Friday. Uh, 63 degrees. It's raining here at the studios of The Source, broadcasting from the Paddock Mall, and, and the trees are blowing. Yes, they are. It's, it looks like it's gusty out there, so uh, mm-hmm. keep in mind that it's going to probably rain all day today and all day Sunday. But tomorrow, for some reason, it, there's going to be like a gap between oh, the, okay. the rain. So rain, uh-huh. no rain, rain, and then cold temperatures again. Oh, okay. Oh. We got to live through it, right? Yeah. I got to get my battery checked too. I'm, I, I just didn't like the idea when I went to start it. It was a, uh, uh, started. You know? Yeah, and last night too, it was scary. Yeah. When we left here. But the thing is, I, I well, never mind. It's my car problems. I want to share them with everybody. Uh, 
Uh, in New Orleans, t uh, yesterday a federal court in New Orleans, a judge heard arguments on the long-argued-over issue of Confederate monuments. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that would be... In, in New Orleans, of course. Uh, plaintiffs who want to keep statues of Robert E. Lee, PGT Beauregard, and Jefferson Davis, along with the Liberty Place Monument, uh, where, they will t uh, where they told the judge that the city doesn't have the authority to remove them. They're arguing everything from historic status to ownership of the structures. Uh, there's a question back in the early 1900s as to whether the city donated the land to the individuals who funded the erecting of the monuments, according to uh, a legal analyst by the name of Doug Sunsiri. Similarly, there is a question of whether the Robert E. Lee statue at Lee Circle falls under the St. Charles Streetcar Line's historic landmark designation. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's also possible laws saying that it's part of a... Jefferson Davis Monument nominated to be part of the National Register of Historic Places issue. Sinceri says even if the city wins the case, the appeals process would likely keep the injunction that's protecting the statues in place, and there may be, and that may be for years to come while the legal process is sorted out. Wow. So they are going through that. Gosh. They're doing that in New Orleans. Yeah, they are, but you know, <laughs> they fought for what they believed in, the Confederacy. People died. Lots of arguments, both sides. Exactly. You wouldn't want a Hitler museum. I mean, Hitler statue. No. no I'm not saying they were Hitler. Too. I'm not comparing yeah. them. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> saying some people will yes. use that argument. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Hitler is right, the guess, bar. I guess we're down to the, uh, to the um, Republican debate. Okay. The first Republican debate of this year. Uh, is considered also one of the feistiest seven candidates were, they were down to now. Started as 12, right? Yes. Which is the fewest number since they started. Uh, they were in North Charleston, South Carolina last night. Um, uh, in recent weeks, Donald Trump has brought up the natural-born citizen argument about Ted Cruz. I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. Questioning whether he is constitutionally able to run for president since he was born in Canada. His mother, of course, was an American citizen. Yep. The moderators asked about the issue, and Cruz said it wasn't an issue for Trump in September and shouldn't be an issue at all. He said, back in September, my friend Donald said he had his lawyers look at this from every which way, and there was no issue there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cruz said, noting that Trump, quote, is dismayed that his poll numbers are falling in Iowa. That's what Cruz said about Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, when moderators asked Ted Cruz about a recent New York Times piece on Cruz not disclosing a loan on a federal form, Cruz hit back at that. And after bashing the media with Hillary Clinton, uh, the media and Hillary Clinton, he admitted, I made a paperwork error. And there you go. I mean, you caught, you got to admit it. Cruz told voters that he did, the, he did file the loan on a state form, but if that is the best hit the New York Times has, they better go go back to the well. He's not happy with New York at all. No, I don't. I can understand why. So when he was asked about his hit earlier this week on Trump's New York values statement, Cruz clarified that they are socially liberal or pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage. That's what he views New Yorkers as. Mm. Socially liberal, pro-abortion, and pro-gay marriage. Blanket statement. He then, he then turned around a Trump attack on him saying not a lot of conservatives come out of Manhattan. Uh, an apparent reference to Trump telling crowds that not too many evangelicals come out of Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> well, shot for shot, you know. And then Trump, uh, you should have seen his face. He said, Trump's uh, face? Yeah, he was talking about how New York responded to 911. And uh, he said, what tr he said, Trump said that what Cruz said was, quote, very insulting. That was a very insulting statement that Ted made, was the exact quote. Gosh. And his eyes, his Gosh. little eyes shifted back and forth yeah. as he said those <laughs> words. Well, we need someone strong, and he's the guy. Uh, the debate was, uh, let's see, it was without a Ted Cruz Marco Rubio showdown for most of the evening, but after 11 p.m., the two finally went head to head with the Florida senator throwing a 
the kitchen sink at the Texas senator. <laughs> Rubio accused Cruz of flip-flopping on immigration, birthright citizenship, crop insurance, trade legislation, ethanol subsidies, and even said Cruz wanted to cut military spending. Rubio jabbed, quote, that is not consistent conservatism. That is political calculation, unquote. Cruz hit back, saying the allegations are absolutely false, adding he appreciates you're dumping your research folder on the debate stage. Uh, <laughs> well, it's getting down and dirty now. It's getting to the end. Chris Christie and Marco Rubio went head-to-head over Christie's record in New Jersey. Uh, Rubio said, I like Chris Christie, but we cannot afford to have a president of the United States that supports Common Core. Mm-hmm. He also hit Christie on gun control. Uh, Sparks flew as Christie hit back. He said, you know, I like Marco, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like him. He's a good guy. Yeah. I like how they do this. And two years ago, he called me a conservative reformer that New Jersey needed. That was before he was running against me. Now that he, now that he is running against me, he has changed his tune. <laughs> uh, okay. What else do I have from there? Um, on Global Affairs, uh, Chris Christie said regarding the president, he said, Tuesday night I watched story time with Barack Obama at the State of the Union, and I got to tell you, mm-hmm. it sounded like everything in the world was going amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we agree about that. Jeb Bush was there. Let's not leave him out. So, mm-hmm. so was Ben Carson, by the way. Jeb Bush said if she gets elected her first 100 days instead of setting the agenda, she might be going back and forth between the White House and the courthouse. We need to stop that. Of course, he made that statement about Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I just, uh, she just doesn't strike a good chord with me, and she doesn't value human life because it goes back to Benghazi. What, di- what, what difference does it make when she said that when the people lost their lives? But she wouldn't say that if that was her child. And on ISIS, Ben Carson said, I'm happy to get a question this early on. I was going to ask you to wake me up when the time came. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's kind of funny, but it's what the press decided to, to single out. Uh, yeah. On the loan scandal, Ted Cruz said, um, thank you for passing on the hit, that hit piece in front page of the New York Times. You know the nice thing about the mainstream media. They don't hide their views. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cruz came under scrutiny for not reporting alone. We had that part earlier in the other parts. So let me skip that one. Uh, the whole birther issue also. On the gun control issue, uh, Donald Trump said the guns don't pull the trigger. It's the people that pull the trigger. Exactly. The American people have rejected your agenda, and now you're trying to go around it. That's not right. It's not constitutional, and we are going to kick your rear end out of the White House come this fall. That's what Chris Christie said. Uh, talking against President Obama's recently unveiled executive actions on guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the bad guys aren't going to sit there and get the guns legally. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, Good morning, Larry and Robin. I thought there was something interesting last night. Ted Cruz, uh, when his citizenship uh, became under question from Donald Trump, he eventually, I don't know if you guys caught that, but he said, what about yourself? Uh, Donald Trump's mother was uh, pregnant when she immigrated from Scotland to the United States uh, with uh, one child, and she had two or three children already. So uh, could it have been Donald Trump uh, be the anchor baby? Maybe that's why he's so hypervigilant about that. He doesn't want anybody to question his uh, uh, dominion. That's right. Yeah, so that's all I got. Yeah, (laughs) I'm sure that's true, yeah. Yeah, Well, he was born here, though, right, even though he wasn't conceived here. I'm I'm sure, yeah. But but, but I know, I mean, if, if... if you look at how people play the game, it's a game. Uh-huh. It's a game. It, it is. They're, they're, it's a sport right now. Yeah. You know, and and in, in in being a spectator of this sport called you know nominate me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> On both sides, this is not just a, polit- a Republican. Exactly. In today's case, it is because it was last night. But it's a game called nominate me, and and mm-hmm. the game requires you to have an offense and a defense. Mm-hmm. You know, just like football, just like m- most sports, right? Right, exactly. And so you have to be very good at both, mm-hmm. right? Right. So, exactly. and that's what they're doing—they're playing the game. And so, it, what we, how we benefit from it, besides being entertained by it, is that we, you know, some of the real, true issues eventually will come out. The the problem I, I think that we all have with the, all of these debates on TV is, is simply that it is 
entertaining more than educational. And that's why after Jeb Bush showed up in top of the where was he top of the world yes that we went and saw him yep okay so, so he had this him. had this uh town hall meeting we did our amateur videotape of the event mm-hmm. and i think even that amateur videotape does a better job of showing what jeb bush stands for whether you agree with him or not mm-hmm. please try to hear what i'm saying i think every candidate Every candidate should be doing town hall meetings like the one Jeb Bush did in some small community somewhere in this country. And every one of them should have some kind of an amateur video. Why I say amateur? Because a professional will edit out all the things that the candidate doesn't want heard. Yeah, exactly. You know? But an amateur video like the one we had, I mean, we put as much of it in as you can. Now, we had a limit to 20 minutes, but that's a Facebook rule. Yeah. And, and I think if you had enough of them up there... We would have a better understanding of what each candidate stands for, as opposed to these what these uh, these debates uh, bring to the forefront. I'm sorry, I cut into the the legal ID. So let me do it. This is W O C A Ocala. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. GOP presidential candidates going head to head in last night's Fox Business Network debate in South Carolina. Ted Cruz asked about hitting Donald Trump on New York City issues. Everyone understands that the values in New York City are socially liberal or pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage. Trump, who questioned Cruz's eligibility to be president, responded. When the World Trade Center came down, I saw something that no place on earth could have handled more beautifully, more humanely than New York. And we rebuilt downtown Manhattan, and everybody in the world watched, and everybody in the world loved New York and loved New Yorkers. And I have to tell you, that was a very insulting statement that Ted made. And reports say that the Coast Guard searching for two marine choppers, which collided near the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Fox News, we report, you decide. Who said that? Me, down here. (gasps) What are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. Well, uh, what are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. Don't you remember me? Don't you know that we miss you? Miss me? Who misses me? You know, all your friends in the forest. The trees, the pond, that little fort that you made out of branches. We all miss you. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. Oh, I guess that makes sense. This forest is not that far away. Have an adventure today. I'm sure your mom would take you. You're right. I should get out. I want to have fun. Play in puddles, catch frogs, and climb trees. Hey, Mom! Yeah, hon? <gasps> Stephen! What is that in your hand? It's my sense of adventure, Mom. It's telling me we need to get out of the house and have some fun in nature today. Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Gene Powell, Pasture Mowing. Gene and Debbie would like to thank you for another successful year of business. We also want to wish everybody a safe, healthy, and prosperous 2016. We are ready to be of service with our Pasture Mowing. 352-629-2440. Locally owned and operated, experienced and reliable, commercial and residential, licensed and insured. Powell Jean, G-E-N-E at yahoo.com. 352-629-2440. Gene Powell, Pasture Mowing. 352-629-2440. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965.
We are saving thousands with Robert Palmer. Uh, so yeah, so rule number one is always shop around. Always shop around. If you're trying to get a mortgage, if you're trying to get the best credit card, if you're looking at student loans, cell phone bills, you name it, rule number one is always shop around. Always shop around. That's rule number one, just one more vital part of fighting back to stop being a financial zombie. Yes, you can take the mystery out of the complicated world of finances. Cards when it comes to your money. Listen in on 96.3 FM and 1370 AM, Saturdays at 12.05. Have you heard of Hyper Directory? When looking for local businesses, go to hyper.directory. No need for triple W, no need for dot com, just hyper.directory. Connecting customers to local companies when it matters most. Hyper Directory is your local business directory partnered with the Ocala Chamber and Economic Partnership to bring you trusted local businesses. Keeping Ocala local. Use hyper.directory, no triple W, not even dot com, just hyper.directory. Connecting customers to businesses when it matters most. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. You're listening to WOCA. Ocala. All right, five minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Galen Newnold from Life South Community Blood Center is on the phone to deliver his daily message that without you donating blood, there is no blood supply. Good morning, Galen. Hey, good morning. Larry Robin. How are y'all? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, we, we had an interesting I- interview yesterday um, with a guy. A, a guy, yeah. But, but his book talks about a lady, a scientist in 1955. She took an old... Um, uh, rat, and she did some kind of a s- sutures with a young rat, so that anyway, so the, it was like the two were artificially Siamese twins, mm-hmm. and the old rat uh, regained its youthfulness. And and scientists oh. scientists said, "No, come on, you're making this up. We, you're lying to us." And they had, they gave her a big hard time. But I guess two years ago they tried it again. They took took all that time, mm-hmm. and yeah, the same results happened. So then wow. I so I said to the guy, and this was has to do with your blood thing. I said to him, so does that mean if I if I have some kind of really bad thing happen to me and I need like five units of blood, and somehow every unit I get came from somebody who's eighteen years old, will it make me any younger? And he said, no, because the properties that do that are in the platelets. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard this before? No, no, no. I, I think he misspoke. What? what? What he, what I think he intended to say is the properties that make those regenerative cells are in the marrow of your body, right? So, um, wh- when your body is reproducing your red cells and platelets and plasma and everything constantly, um, those it get, it just starts to degenerate. That's how we get the aging. Uh, so, I, I guess what they did with the mouse is because the younger mouse was replenishing you know, fresher cells that were, you know, more elastic and everything else, that had that impact mm. onto, you know, the rat. So the question becomes, if you could do that in humans, you would literally have a donor human being for another human being in theory. Which would be very unethical. I mean, very, yeah, yeah that's crazy. That, well, that, that's but, but science think about fiction. It. I mean, all right, let's, well, let's just play it out. You, you know, you've got um, Ted Williams, right? They cut off his head thinking that they could regenerate him later. Right, right, right. So, so you're telling me that an eccentric billionaire wouldn't say, hey, hey no, I, 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 your I, family. I do think that's you know, possible. A, tw- a 12-year-old, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll pay you $200 million. Right, yeah. Uh, you give me your 12-year-olds, and we're going to attach them to my back. Right. Um, and I'm going to live off of them. I mean, that's a, that's a scene right out of Harry Potter. Right. Oh, uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> I didn't know what show so, that would be from. But, yeah, it sounded like something some science fiction writer would make up, but could be a reality mm-hmm. because of the money, as you just said. That yeah. was a movie about that. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a whole black market for transplants, you know. Organ and, and I'm going to give you uh, can I, can organ I, donation. All right. I don't, I don't want to get too deep into this one, but I have, I have a... Sure. Interesting. I'm going to have to look that up. I haven't heard of that. I have a, the- the marrow, I have the a philosophical yeah. question. And, and, of course, you'd have to believe in heaven in order for you to answer this question. Do you think if we made ourselves immortal, 
that we'd be cheating ourselves out of heaven? So there would be certain people who oh. lived live forever here, you know, dealing with the, the, the things we have to deal with here. And and you're not you're not getting to this place where you don't ever have to worry about some of the things we worry about here. Right. Uh, uh, I think you always have to worry. This isn't. This is. Uh, I mean, heaven is a lot more than you know eternal life. It's eternal life without evil and sin. Um, so, no. I, I mean, I, I don't. First of all, I don't think man is ever smart enough to, to that we'll live forever. Because I think we'll continue to extend the life, but then at the same time we shorten it in some other way. Mm. So. But as, but as soon as you bring yourself back to twenty, you get hit by a bus. That's why. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's just it. Yeah, I mean, too, that's and that's and that's where the evil comes in. You know, I'd ever I ever put the bullet into your brain. I have a topic there, that I, your head off like Highlander. <laughs> I have a topic that I think you're going to like and, and have a lot of opinion about. Uh, but first, let's find out about the blood supply. What do we need to know? Uh, again, still kind of where we were yesterday. Need O positive. Uh, desperately need a O uh, type O, both O positive and O negative. And uh, we need platelet donors. And that's kind of where we're at. So much better than we were this time last week. But we just need to continue to get out there and roll up our sleeves and donate blood and give a gift of life. Uh, yeah, donate uh, blood and be sure to thank Penn Flooring for sponsoring the segment that Galen is on each morning to uh, make that message clear to everybody and, and explain anything you might be concerned about and maybe alleviate any fears. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was in that category when I first started. Uh, Penn Flooring has been putting flooring into people's homes and offices more than a quarter of a century. They've got some beautiful samples for you to check out at 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the McKay Williams Bridge here in Ocala, not too far from Pine Avenue, and thank the the uh, folks over at Palm Garden. Also, they have uh, a beautiful facility for long term health care. If you uh, need skilled nursing care or your loved one does, it's a great place for them to uh, get that care. Yep. And uh, to just, I know there's a lot of facilities that offer that. So take a tour. Go to Palm Garden, and you will find out why we think it's one of the best. And uh, just, uh, and on top of that, the people are really as amazing as can be. Right. So. <clears throat> Thank him for that. And there's a commercial coming up in just a little bit, as soon as I find it in the thing here. <laughs> 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 All right, so so let me tell you what this is. All right, I'm going to start talking about music and then shift it over to sports because there's a, there was an article printed, and I don't have where it was printed, but it was written by a guy named Scott Saylor. He's the president of the National Athletic Trainers Association. Okay. And he talks about sports specialization, especially among young people, young children. Okay, children, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so before I ask you about your thoughts on the sports, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on music. If you are a child and you're studying piano or guitar or violin or any instrument, typically that's your instrument. You, you don't, your mother, your father, the, the teacher doesn't ever say, by the way, you know what I think will really en enhance your playing ability is if you also learn another instrument, mm -hmm. pick any other instrument. Why that doesn't happen, I don't know. I think it should happen. Mm -hmm. Here's why. Mm -hmm. Because I think, it's just like with language, when you know more than one language, even if you, just, if you don't speak another language fluently, if you just know a little bit of it, you have a better grasp of the words and the meanings and the origins and all that. With, with music, you have a better understanding of music in general when you can play just another instrument. I mean, to me, that's an, an obvious observation that I've made, although nobody teaches their children two instruments at one time. Mm -hmm. It's usually... Okay, so this is this guy's opinion about sports. Okay, it's the same thing. He says... Um, we are making that same mistake with sports in our country. The American Medical Society for Sports Medicine published results from a 2012 survey that found 88% of college athletes surveyed participated in more than one sport as a child, thus busting the myth that athletes as children should be, uh, what do you call it? not forced, but coached to, to only stick to one sport. So, Gail, I'm going to toss it to you. What, do you. what are your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is an ongoing debate. I mean, I, I've actually had this conversation with many a parent who thinks their son or daughter is a special athlete, something, right? So, um, every sport has its own specialization. 
Uh, I, I think the one that is probably the least specialized is football because it takes an overall athleticism. But baseball is highly specialized. Volleyball is highly specialized. Um, you know, softball, et cetera, uh, are highly specialized. And so the issue that you face is, do I want my child, do I believe my child is, is really, really good at this sport? And if he focuses on this sport, um, without another sport getting in the way, is he going to be better for it? Or do I go for the more rounded approach? Uh, and and that's, a, that's an ongoing debate. And you hear, you hear issues on both sides. So um, I, I know kids who play only baseball, and then I have kids, uh, I know kids who play baseball, soccer, and football, or basketball, too. So it, it all depends, and again, basketball is another specialized sport. So um, that's an ongoing debate, and, the, and there's a lot of data on both sides. Okay. So I, 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 don't, I think for the good of the child, I, I'm a big believer in being well-rounded. And then at a certain age, and I don't know what that age is, you have to become, this is what I'm going to be really good at. Because it's few and far in between for one person to be really, really good at everything. And when you're there... You can you you're just so naturally athletically gifted. You can do anything. You can decide you want to go be a pole vaulter and and become a a, a high level pole vaulter. Huh, so huh. Uh, that that's pretty rare. All right. So th- this uh, and it sounds like we agree. And and I like what you said that maybe at, at one point they should be f- focusing on one and then at at a certain age start diversifying a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's probably true for music too. I'm, I'm no, just... no, no, no. I, I, I'm saying the reverse. I think you should start playing all sports. Oh, and start then... out playing. Oh, oh, and then focus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Let's get, let's and get... then focus on one sport. All right, on the other yeah, side, the reverse I... of what I think you should do with music. Every single thing that this guy Scott Saylor says, I agree with. But he's talking about sports. But I can I can apply it to music, and I, I would apply it to language too, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, so he has the article is actually called. It's actually a blog. It's not an article. That's probably mm-hmm. why I don't know where I got it from, but. It's called Myths of Sports Specialization. He published it yesterday afternoon. Uh, so let's let's continue with what he says are the myths of sports specialization when we come back with Galen Unald and get Galen's comments on this. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Hey, Robin, my friend's mother is getting out of the hospital and needs rehab before she goes home. Do you know of a rehab you'd recommend? Sure. Our friend Jan Marino works at Palm Garden, and she's always talking about the work they do there. Great idea. I'm going to call Jan right now. What's the number? 854-6262. I'll call 854-6262, or I might just stop by Palm Garden. It's at the corner of 27th Avenue and 34th Street. Great. I'll go with you. Enrich your life at Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. Here, century-old oak trees surround stunning homes, the finest resort-style amenities, and a stately clubhouse. Our exceptional golf course will host the 2016 Coates Golf Championship presented by r and Carriers. And here you can savor a luxurious lifestyle that's second to none. Call 352-369-6969 for more information on our available real estate options and to schedule a home tour. The play How I Learned to Drive is live on stage at the Ocala Civic Theater January 14th through the 24th. Lil Bit is an outsider and she feels an odd kinship with Uncle Peck, a charming southern gentleman, until he turns predatory and molests his young niece during so-called driving lessons in his Buick Riviera. This Pulitzer Prize winning drama is intense and at times shockingly funny. This play contains strong adult themes and language. Tickets are $25 for adults, $12 for students. 18 minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Looks the rainy out there right now. Galen, is it raining where you are? Oh, yeah. You're driving? Yeah. In the, driving? Are you driving right now? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they say some snowflakes might make it as far south as Atlanta. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hate <laughs> snow and ice so bad. Yeah, so a, bad for, for a blood center. Oh, is it really? This is about the time of the year that it starts snowing and icing up. 
Yep. Yeah, snowflakes in the south is what it's saying here. Arctic air moving in this week, <sighs> this weekend. Um, not here. Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Raleigh, Atlanta. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, all right, so this guy, Scott Taylor, he wrote this article. Uh, Most college athletes specialize in one sport as a child is a myth. He already dismissed that myth with the other uh, uh, fact. Here's another one. Okay, it's the, the only way for my child to be good enough is for him or her to focus specifically on one sport early in life. And that that's different from what you say. He says... Uh, there's a study that suggests children who play multiple sports are often effective, more effective than those who specialized in single sports during their childhood and adolescence. That's exactly yeah, what Yeah, absolutely. And, and, yeah, yeah and, and the thing is, is uh, again, there comes to a point where you may have to specialize in order for your child to compete at a high level. Um, but there is a tremendous amount of coordination that takes place in every sport, and it may take a different set of skills. And, I, and I've heard people talk about, well, what about gymnastics? You know, the thing about gymnastics is it, it's a very, it's not an isolated sport. So if, if, if your son or daughter is in gymnastics, they're going to have the pole, the, 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 they're going to learn jumping and strength training, and, and there's different elements within that sport. Right, right, so, right. And, and I, cause I, I'm like, no, that's like six sports in one sport. This is an interesting so, topic, um, if, if you think yeah. about it. Robin, did you mm -hmm. ever study, I don't know anything about dancing, but do ballet dancers, as little girls or, or, or boys, only study ballet, or do they study... No, they do ballet and tap. When I was little, I did both. When Shannon was little, she did both, ballet and tap, because there are different different movements in each skill that makes, you know, the one, which, which whichever one you want to eventually focus on, huh. you use that. See, I, and this is maybe a mistake they make in the... Right, but eventually you, you have to specialize. You have to become... Okay, so... Uh, well, you you have to choose, yeah. but I, I don't think the parents should force right. the child to choose. That's why when TJ and she oh, were growing up... I don't think that's what up, we're talking about, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But 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 I think we're not I'm forcing the child to choose. We're just saying that at some point you're going to have to choose. But see, in music, it's not that way. Maybe you're right. It should be that way. Maybe a, ch a child should be encouraged to go ahead and play the drums a little bit. Go ahead and play play it all. You know, just uh, now, I, I don't I don't know anything about music. I know in language, you want to expose your child to different languages as early as that possible would make sense. They're the most they're the most receptive. Yeah. Uh, my my so, uh, I'll tell you this, Caleb. Um, is much better in Spanish and uh, than than my younger one because when he was at a young age he went to this this preschool and the lady only spoke Spanish oh. and, uh, so and and because of that so he, absorbed he, some of he has a, he was a, a more natural tendency to Spanish and it's it's crazy and and it took my wife and I a while before we figured that out I'm like that's what it is so his vocabulary is a lot more extensive. Um, and because he was exposed to this person for two years when he was, you know, two to four. So, I, I, uh, I, when, when you see uh, athletes in other countries, it, it seems like, oh, for example, Russia. You always you always heard that they were like grooming their young athletes very early absolutely. on, right? Yeah, and, and they, yeah, and you've got to you got to take that with a grain of salt because here's here's what happened in when they're in communist Russia and even China. So what they do is they go in and they make uh, every student participate in one of these sports. And then when they find a student who, is, who excels in that sport, they pluck them out of there and then they put them in their national sports academy. And they get high-level coaching and high-level training. And as long as they're good enough to stay there, they stay there. But the second they're not, then they're sent back to the regular population. So they're taking the elite of the elite of the elite and then fine-tuning them throughout their whole life. So that's not a model that's going to work here. Right, Even get... though people try it with golf. They, you know, Golf is an example where you see a lot of parents who, my child is only going to play golf, and we're going to play golf every day. Uh, and, and oh, that's an interesting thought. Golf. Yeah, yeah. Because I know, I mean, as a kid, I remember a lot of my friends who were into or one tennis. sport. Yeah. One, almost everybody I know. I'm, I'm thinking about the, the few kids I remember. Yeah, uh, baseball or or high not high. What's that thing called? Hockey. No, hockey. No, no, not hockey. What was that thing oh. with? It's almost like highlight. Uh, um, racquetball. Oh gosh. Oh. oh, tennis. Tennis. I knew guys in tennis and baseball. And what's the other one? <laughs> with the with the. Like highlight. That's pretty funny. It's not highlight, but but anyway. Racquetball. 
no, but they also, but they Basketball also. is not a professional sport. Oh. But they were also into golf. They all, they almost everybody also played golf. Golf was also was always an also. Well, there's handball too. I uh, know. That's not a professional sport. Either. What else are you? Is there? I'll think of it while we t- let me take a phone call from a listener. Go- gosh, we got a lot of people calling in. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Uh, uh, some of the complicating factors in music are that some instruments play on the G clef and some instruments play on the F clef and some instruments play on the C clef. And so you have to learn uh, to read all three staffs. Uh, so that, that complicates some of the choices, but it's not, it's not insurmountable. It's not insurmountable, and you're also talking music theory. And not yes. not hands-on musical instruments exactly. because if you if you and I agree with you I'm not disagreeing but I'm just adding to it and forgive me if I'm muddying up the conversation by bringing music into it but it's the same thing I think for children it, when you have a, a child in a, in a band room who doesn't know how to read any music mm-hmm. and he sits down at a drum or he sits down at a violin or with a violin and he puts his hand on it. It's, it exposes him to the instrument, and then he might decide, oh, gosh, I like the way this sounds. I like the way my fingers feel on this exactly. instrument. Yeah, and that's before music theory really enters the, the equation, exactly. I, th- I think. Just simply okay, playing. Okay, have a good morning, all. Good thought, though. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. And, uh, gosh, so the other phone calls. You can call in. I'm, I'm not favoritizing anybody. No. Nope. You can all call in. No. Nope. But, I, but I, I, I can't even think of a game. What's that game, Robin? It's very popular up north. Where they have a stick, and they have a – look. is it lacrosse? Lacrosse? lacrosse. Lacrosse. That's it. Okay. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Couldn't think about that. Not like highlight, Larry. Lacrosse is not like highlight. I don't know. No. It, I mean, it looks like it. No, it's no. It's, it's like. Um, it's got a stick with a with a basket hockey. on it, right? It's like dirt hockey, lacrosse. Lacrosse. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What's the street yeah. hockey? No, 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 no. It's not on the ground. No, it flies no, through the air. It's lacrosse, Larry. I know. I, All right. Oh, sure I got it. Good, wrong. good morning. You're on the air. Nothing like Iowa. Good morning, Larry. Robin Galen. Hey. I hey. think that, um, like, in a lot of things, music, sports, you want to expose a child or even as an adult to as many things as you can because you never know where your gifts are going to lie. Yeah. You might find, you know, you have a gift for riding a motorcycle. You have a gift for playing an instrument or you have a gift for a certain sport. But until you try that, you, you won't discover where your gifts lie. That's a good, good That's point. A good point. That's a really good so point. So my theory is like expose people to people, adults too. I say try something new. You never know. You might be a savant at it and just never have tried it. That's true. It's true for food too. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> everything in life. Try everything. I'm going to try a few more things. Have a good day. Thank you. That's what I did with Except TJ for, and Shannon for, when they were growing up. Except you for know. tartar sauce on fish. <laughs> There you go. Try that. Ketchup on steak. <laughs> All right, let me, let me give you another myth that he wants to dispel. He says, uh, one myth is that kids need to spend their time learning one sport as a child more, who are, wait, I'm sorry, kids who spend their time learning one sport as a child are more likely to stay active throughout their lives. He says children who specialize in one sport early in life were found to be the first to quit their sport and ended up having Absolutely. their inactivity rates at higher as adults. Because they were Absolutely. forced into that sport, probably. You think? Uh, yeah. I, I don't think forced is the right word. Um, I, I, I mean, I, push. No. Well, there's a difference between, you know, encouraging them and then saying, you know, I want to do that. But then when they can make up their own mind, they're just not going to do it anymore. So, yeah, you, you have to, and I talk to parents about this all the time. I mean, you have to balance uh, with just burning your child out. Yeah, you, they became very, very proficient at the given whatever it is. And now they're old enough to make up their own decision. They're like, I hate this. This is more like a job than it is supposed to be, like fun. I mean, I, I talk to parents who, and their kids play 150 baseball games a year. And, and I, I'm like, uh, you know, and they're 10 years old. And I'm like, I don't know how you can do that. I, I don't think that's necessarily healthy for the child. But hmm. if the child loves it, great. You know, if uh, if they're enjoying it, that's something they do as a family, I encourage it. But uh, don't be shocked when your child's time for them to go into high school, they decide they don't want to play baseball, and that's their decision. It is. So. An in- it's an interesting discussion whether you're focusing on sports or any of the other things we've mentioned. We probably and then, le- probably. And then what do you do? What do you, if you do if your child's not really good enough at, at that level, and they they put their first, you know, fourteen, thirteen, twelve years, whatever, end of their life? Into yeah. Oh, sports. yeah. And I think that's what the last they wanted caller. to play high school, whatever. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's that's absolutely true. So yeah, you got to be you got to balance that. 
Good conversation. I like this conversation. It is very nice. Don't we have any? Con- I I did come to a conclusion. I came to a conclusion that I was oh, I was oh. wrong. I think I think my conclusion is that I was wrong in, in, regarding music. I was thinking early on you study one and then later on you you add another one to it or mm-hmm. or two to it. But you I think you're right. Maybe early on um, you you grab a couple and you play this or that and the other thing and then and then you focus on one and then you can at, in music's case anyway you add the. Uh, mm-hmm the theory part to this. Yeah, Alex is yeah I, I don't know enough about uh, music to have any clue. Well, and, and music, so I, I music theory is simply a way to record music. People don't like when I say that, but that's the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Music, is, music theory is yeah. not music, it's music theory. Exactly. And what I mean by that is before there was anything called a record player or a tape recorder or a wire recorder, there was paper. Mm-hmm. And in order for people to understand what that paper <laughs> represented, you had to understand the theory behind it. Mm-hmm. So music sure. theory gives people an opportunity to play music that was recorded, unquote, quote unquote, with with a pen, with a pa- with paper. Mm-hmm. I'll t- I could tell you more about this, but we have no time. <laughs> Galen, where's the Bloodmobile today? Bloodmobile today, Larry, is at the College of Central Florida. Go to any blood. Save some lives. Yeah, please. Yes. Yeah. All right, Galen, you enjoy your day and your weekend. Be careful out there and, and uh, pray for snow. <laughs> Amen. No, no, no snow. <laughs> no snow. All right, we'll talk to you All on right, Monday. You guys are the best. Bye, right, y'all. Bye. <laughs> News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. GOP presidential candidates going head to head in last night's Fox Business Network debate in South Carolina. Ted Cruz asked about hitting Donald Trump on New York City issues. Everyone understands that the values in New York City are socially liberal or pro abortion or pro gay marriage. Trump, who questioned Cruz's eligibility to be president, responded When the World Trade Center came down, I saw something that no place on earth could have handled more beautifully, more humanely than New York. And we rebuilt downtown Manhattan, and everybody in the world watched, and everybody in the world loved New York and loved New Yorkers. And I have to tell you, that was a very insulting statement that Ted made. And reports say that the Coast Guard searching for two marine choppers, which collided near the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Fox News, we report, you decide. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. Well, uh, what are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. Don't you remember me? Don't you know that we miss you? Miss me? Who misses me? You know, all your friends in the forest. The trees, the pond, that little fort that you made out of branches. We all miss you. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. Oh, I guess that makes sense. The forest is not that far away. Have an adventure you today. I'm sure your mom would take you. You're right. I should get out. I want to have fun. Play in puddles, catch frogs, and climb trees. Hey, Mom! Yeah, hon? <gasps> Stephen! What is that in your hand? It's my sense of adventure, Mom. It's telling me we need to get out of the house and have some fun in nature today. Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Happy New Year and howdy, folks. Did you ever have someone get fresh with you? Or I'll hear to tell you what to do. Just get along down to Dairy Queen Silver Springs and keep your New Year's resolution to eat fresh. That's right, fresh garden salads topped with crunchy fried or grilled chicken or a fresh banana shake or a banana split. That's the kind of fresh folks like at Dairy Queen Silver Springs where they always treat you like kings and queens. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. 
That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 840-0750. That's 840-0750. Located next door to Silver Spring State Park and a few minutes from historic downtown Ocala, our award-winning Holiday Inn Express Hotel and Suites of Silver Spring.